Hello everyone, uh, Jo here from the online community team and thank you all for joining us. As usual, we've got James, the social media manager with us, working behind the scenes, making sure this all runs smoothly. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> and so by now, many of you will have heard the really exciting news that AOT assessments will be back from the 29th of June. We know this is the one piece of information you've been waiting for and we'll have lots of questions. Rather than go through the details here, we'll post a link in the comments at the end of the video for the full details of what you should be expecting and when you can start to book your assessments. I just want to highlight that for both the advanced and professional synoptic, we'll be providing additional windows starting from early to mid-July and we'll be intending to deliver six more windows for each level this year. For foundation level, we'll be continuing with our intention to issue calculated results for those eligible and we'll resume foundation synoptic windows from August. Uh, just bear in mind that this is all subject to government regulations remaining at their current or less strict levels and this may change if the government guidance reverts to its previous more stringent recommendations. We expect all training providers and assessment venues to act responsibly and ensuring that they adhere to all government rules and guidelines in relation to social distancing when offering AOT assessments on site. If any of you have any concerns due to shielding or any other health concerns relating to the pandemic, then please just speak to your training provider who should be able to advise further. It's also worth noting that we are continuing to proceed with our plans to offer remote invigilation, all of which will be shared on the link at the end of this live video. If you aren't already signed up to the AAT Weekly Student Newsletter, now is your time to do it. It's so important that you're kept up to date with the latest AAT news, which is sent every Tuesday morning. AAT Weekly is your weekly e-newsletter, giving you access to study tips and key information to help you prepare for your assessments. So uh, to sign up to receive the AAT Weekly, you'll need to follow these steps. So log into your My AAT account, if you can click on the three dots next to your name, so that's in the top right hand corner, then just click um, edit my details and then edit your communication preferences so that you're signed up to your relevant e-newsletter and then simply just hit save. Uh, we'll put these uh, directions also in the comment box in case you haven't been able to jot these down. Uh, we really hope you've enjoyed our weekly study sessions with thanks to all the tutors who've made this possible as well as you all for joining us we've had some really great feedback so thank you on our last session we were joined by bpp who delivered you a session on business hacks as usual you can watch any of our study sessions at facebook.com forward slash your aat forward slash videos You'll find a huge variety of topics to choose from, whether that's AVSY, PDSY, and many more. So today we're going to be joined by Jeff Grimson, AAT tutor at Premier Training. Jeff will be going through a study session focusing on the personal tax module, which is on the professional level. Uh, this will be looking at tax computations, the easy way to sort out tax bans, rates, and allowances. Okay, so let's bring Jeff into the session. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Thanks Joe. Thanks for joining Hi, us. Hi, Joe. <laughs> how, are you, how are you doing? And how's... <laughs> Good. Glad to have you. Um, how have you and Premier Training been doing during this lockdown? Well, to be honest, in most respects, it's, it's very much business as usual. Um, people who don't know who we are and who don't read their monthly magazine quite as assiduously as they might do, we're currently the reigning large training provider of the year, which we won at conference last May. We saw the writing on the wall before the lockdown became official, so we were well prepared in advance. We're very fortunate. We've got quite a talented IT team and they've kitted us all out. So we're all remotely connected to the main office from our home offices. And we use all our usual resources. Um, I'm actually at home at the moment. <laughs> the screen is because the rest of my office is not as tidy as the front. <laughs> Um, but it's, it's not entirely, yeah, well, they told me, um, it's not been plain sailing all the way mine. One of our IT guys has actually had to more or less take up residence in the office. So apparently he tells me if the computers go, computers go wrong, you have to switch them off and then switch them on again. And sometimes you have to check the plug in. 
Apologies to Channel 4 for that one. <laughs> well, apart from the fact that he's starting to look like Tom Hanks in Castaway, and he's talking to a football with a face drawn on it, he's coping well. He's a good lad, our Calvin. Our systems all work quite <laughs> seamlessly. Um, to the extent students can actually mm -hmm. ring tutors on, on the usual direct lines, um, and it just connects straight through as if we're all at our desks. From outside, you really can't tell any difference. Uh, we're getting our marking done. We're, we're turning assignments around within a couple of days. Um, and the only thing we've been waiting for is, is the assessment system. And that is fantastic news that we will soon be able to get back on with exams again. Uh, we've also we've got a skeleton staff in the warehouse. <laughs> it sounds better when I say that than just Heather. Um, but um, so we are still shipping out materials. You know, anybody who's enrolling at the moment, if people who enroll in the morning, we, we can send stuff out pretty much the same day. Otherwise, it's the next morning. Um, and likewise, our, our online system's working just as always. People who enroll are, are online and can start studying within about an hour of actually, you know, completing the paperwork. The one thing I have been asked to mention mm -hmm. is that the offers on the slide that we showed, they run just to the end of the month for anybody who's, who's interested. Brilliant. Thank you, Jeff. Um, and can you tell us just a bit about what your role is there at Premier Training as well? Myself? Well, I've, I've been at Premier over 20 years now. Uh, I've seen a lot of changes in 20 years. When I started here, it was so long ago, the internet was in black and white. Oh, okay. <laughs> and we had to wind up the computers in the morning. All, all we have to wind up now is each other. That, that, that's never changed. At uh, a conference last year, <laughs> another award, AAT very kindly awarded me this which is a Lifetime Achievement Award. Came as, uh, came as a huge surprise. I'm not quite sure I'm quite not sure what the A's are after. Although, of course, it is quite hard to resist uh, the invitation to, uh, to present today. So speaking of today's <laughs> session, what I'm going to do today is what I would, for me, is the easy way to do personal tax computations. Uh, people who are in practice do these all the time. It must become second nature. But I appreciate a lot of our students aren't necessarily doing these day in day out so this is this is a method and i've constructed the examples to, to include the sort of question scenario that you'll meet in an aat personal tax assessment i've focused very much on the sort of data that you'll get to keep it to keep it nice and simple in the interest of clarity what i have avoided is getting into calculations involving starting rate for savings because my understanding is although we have to know about that that isn't something that will feature in an aat assessment calculation if anybody wants to know especially about the starting rate we've got a video on our website that just covers that it is quite an excellent video i've seen it um, so at this point uh, hopefully i will click the right button and we'll begin our presentation thanks Joe. i just to quickly mention um if you have any questions uh, just pop them into the comment box and james will go through these at the end with jeff Right, over to you, Jeff. Thank you. Okay. Fingers crossed. Okay. Um, can you just say to me, is that visible for everybody? Is that all working okay? Yes, good? it is, Jeff. That's great. Thank you, James. All right. And given that I live in a seaside resort, eyes down, look in your first number. Okay, tax computations. Now, this is one of those jobs. Since the tax system was simplified by the introduction of two further personal allowances, the whole and oh, and the introduction, of course, of the reduced personal allowance for, for, for the highest earners, people who earn over hundred thousand pounds. This really isn't as easy a job as it used to be. So, what I've tried to do is boil this down to a step-by-step -step approach which will steer you round the things that most easily go wrong in this procedure. And by making it easier, hopefully, we're, we're less likely to have any errors. There are 12 steps to the procedure. Now, that sounds a lot, but actually, if you're methodical, it does become second nature. And a lot of the steps are quite small ones. So the first step that we have to do is to calculate the individual's adjusted net income. That is because once the income exceeds £100,000, a personal allowance, the tax-free allowance, is reduced by a pound for every £2 
over that threshold. The basic personal allowance, of course, for 2019-20 was £12,500. And of course, we're in 2020 now. All tax exams in 2020 are based, of course, on the Finance Act 2019. And this will change January next year when everything will change to uh, the Finance Act 20. Um, possibly, you know, this it's worth mentioning for those who don't. One thing you don't have to do is learn all of the rates and allowances because all of the tax data is given in a pop up in the exam. And that's something that's well worth remembering. So step one, let's illustrate this with an example. A person earns £70,000. Income doesn't exceed £100,000. Therefore, there's no adjustment. The basic personal allowance applies, which for FA19 is £12,500. No change. Second example, a person who earns £110,000 a year. That exceeds £100,000 by £10,000. Divide the 10 by 2 to give us 5. Take 5 from the standard personal allowance. This person can earn £7,500 of earned income or non-savings income tax-free. Now, let's introduce a complication, seeing as the Chancellor likes to. If a person makes contributions to a personal pension scheme, and that is a personal pension scheme, not an employer's occupational pension scheme, then we gross up the value of the contribution and we deduct that from their earnings to calculate adjusted net income. To gross up, that means we're compensating by the basic rate tax that's been deducted from it. We multiply by 100 over 80. So, person who earns £125,000 a year, but contributes £16,000 to personal pension contribution, will gross up the contribution by 180 to make 20,000, subtract 20 from the earnings of 125, that leaves us with an adjusted net income of £105,000. Difference of five, we divide by two, take that from the personal allowance. This person, even though they're earning more than the person in the previous example, will actually have a higher personal allowance of £10,000 because of the effect of contributions to an approved pension scheme. And further on, we'll, we'll see an example just can make. So, that's step one. Now let's look at step two. The next thing we have to do is work out the threshold at which higher rate tax uh, starts to be paid. The reason we have to work this out is that, again, pens personal pension contributions, but also charitable donations, um, will cause the higher rate threshold to be raised. So the higher rate threshold by default for FA19, 2019, 20 is 37,500 pounds. First example, a person who makes no personal pension contribution, does no charitable giving, threshold is 37,500 pounds. Second example, a person who contributes 4,800 pounds to a personal pension, but does no charitable giving, gross up the 4,800 to give 6,000, add that to the threshold, 43,500. This person will pay basic rate tax on the first 43,500 pounds of income. Another example, a person who contributes 19,600 pounds to their pension, 1,600 pounds in charitable giving, add them together, gross them up. That means that the basic rate bank will be increased by 26,500 pounds this person will not start to pay higher rate tax until their taxable income exceeds £64,000. Now, those are the two preparatory steps. Now for the rest of the steps, um, and there will be pictures. So, first example. Andrew has the following income for 2019. His general income is £20,000. His savings income is £10,000. He has dividend income of £10,000, which gives him a total income of £40,000. 
Um, plainly, that's a long way short of £100,000, so there is no effect on his personal allowance. He will get the full personal allowance. Um, no mention of pension contribution. Um, so the standard higher rate threshold will apply. So the third step is we're going to draw a graph. And the first thing we do is draw the axes of a graph on which the income will be plotted. We start the graph below zero as what we're going to do is show the personal allowance as a minus figure. So one axis, another axis. Step four, enter the personal allowance. And there it is, 12,500. So that's four steps. We've, we've worked out the personal allowance. We've worked out the higher rate threshold. Um, and now we are entering them on the graph. The fifth step is to put the higher rate threshold. Again, there's no mention of, of pension or giving. So 37,500. Now, step six is to enter Andrew's general income, which we can see is 20,000 pounds. Starting from the personal allowance, we can see that after we've deducted the personal allowance of 12,500, this bar on the graph will go up to 7,500. Plainly, that's a long way short of higher rate threshold. Step seven, now we're going to enter Andrew's savings income. That's the next 10, so that this graph is going to go up to 17,500. The reason all the time we're interested in where the top of the earnings is, is because this will determine whether or not he's a higher rate taxpayer. Step eight is to enter Andrew's dividend income. That's another 10,000. So again, his total earnings, taxable earnings at 27,500. We now know because his total earnings are below the higher rate threshold that he will qualify for the full 1,000 pounds personal savings allowance, which we can overlay on his savings income. And we can next, step 10, apply his personal dividend allowance, which is £2,000 regardless of income. Again, that's the first £2,000 of his dividend income. Step 11, we can label up each of these bands with the tax payable. First 12500 is personal allowance which is zero well is not taxed nothing the first seven and a half thousand above the above zero is all basic rate 20 percent the personal savings allowance of a thousand is zero percent no tax that leaves nine thousand at 20 percent standard rate which is 1800 pounds two thousand dividend at nothing and that leaves 8,000 dividend at 7.5%. And the final step is simply to add them up. So Andrew's tax bill for the year is £3,900. Now that was a very simple example. No adjustments, no complications. Let's take another example. A little bit more to it this time. This, is, this time we'll have a higher rate taxpayer. Riang R has the following income for 2019. Stroke 20. She has £40,000 general income, £5,000 saving income, £8,000 dividend income. So, first check, add them up, 53. Step one is less than 100. We don't have to worry about the uh, uh, adjusted net income and any adjustment to the tax free allowance. Okay. No mention of pension child giving, so higher rate threshold is also the standard 37,500. Once again, we draw the graph. Once again, we'll show the personal allowance minus 12,500 and the higher rate threshold. There we go. Now, when we draw Bianca's general income, this is going to take up the first 27,500 pounds of the basic rate band. Savings income is another five. That takes us to 32,500. And now when we add the dividend income, we can see that Bianca's income, taxable income, exceeds the 
basic rate band, so higher rate tax will apply. And the reason we need to know this at this point is that a personal savings allowance as a result is reduced to £500. Step 10, dividend allowance doesn't change regardless. And once again, this time you'll notice some of the dividend income is going to be at higher rate. So label the bands. Once again, 12,500 times 0% is nothing. This time, 27,500 times 20% is 5,500. 500 times 0% is nothing. 4,500 times 20% is 900. Dividend allowance, 2,000. Again, nothing. The remaining, now, nah, uh, the remaining part of the basic rate band is, is 3,000. That is at 7.5%, which leaves the other £3,000 of dividend income, which is now at higher rate. Once again, add them up. Now, Bianca's tax payable on her income of £53,000 is £7,600. Um, and I mentioned that contributions to charity and, and a personal pension make a huge difference. Um, it happens that Bianca has a colleague who does the same job, um, and has the same income and also the same pattern of savings in many respects, but also contributes to a pension scheme. So, Bianca's colleague Chang has the following income. General income, same as Bianca, 40,000. Savings income, again, 5,000. Dividend income, 5,000. Gives him a total income of 53,000. So again, no adjustment to the personal allowance. Very prudently, Chang makes a contribution of £4,000 to a personal pension scheme. And I stress, this isn't the company scheme, it's not an occupational scheme, it is his own private arrangement with a personal pension provider. So, we gross up the 4000 contribution to make 5000 so Chang's basic rate band is increased from 37500 to 42,500. So, once again, draw the axes. This time we show the personal allowance as before. Now this time the higher rate threshold is a bit higher than it was before. So, start again, step six. Like I said, the steps, a lot of the steps are pretty straightforward. Start with general income, 40 less 12 and a half means 27 and a half thousand is above zero and taxable. Savings income takes us up to 32 and a half. Dividend income takes us to 40,500. Notice this time, this is below the revised higher rate threshold. So this has quite a significant impact on the tax that Chang will pay. Personal savings allowance, because his total income is now below the higher rate threshold, he gets the full 1,000. Dividend income, as we said, doesn't change. And none of the income has exceeded the threshold. So 27,500 times 20% as before, 1,000 at nothing, 4,000 at 20. So he's saving, he's paying less tax on his savings income. And again, all of his dividend income is now below the higher rate threshold. So if we add up 6750, which means just checking, and that's £850 less in tax than the same earnings without the pension contribution. So finally, let's look at how we deal with a high earner. An example of earnings that exceed £100,000. This time, again, we've got pension scheme. Dorota has the following income for 2019 slash 20. Her general income is £90,000. Her savings income is £18,000. Dividend income is £12,000, which, which uh, oh, and also she makes a contribution of £8,000 to a personal pension scheme. 
So gross up the pension scheme to give us 8,000 times 100 over 80, 10,000. So our basic rate band is increased by 10,000 because of that, 47,500. Our adjusted net income, 90 plus 18 plus 12, take away 10, gives us 110,000 pounds. So again, the her reduction in the basic rate band, the reduction is reduced by the contribution. That exceeds 100,000 by 10,000. Half of that is five, so we take five from the personal allowance. Her personal allowance is only 7,500 pounds. So, once again, draw the graph. And this time, we start at minus 7,500. So we're not starting as low as before. And Dorothy's basic rate, because of that pension scheme, so her basic rate, threat, the higher rate threshold is at 47,500. But other than this, the procedure is just the same. So, £82,500 is, is the taxable element of her general income, of which 47500 takes her to the higher rate threshold, and then the remaining, however much, um, is at higher rate. Savings income goes on top of that which takes us up to 100,500. Dividend income goes on top of that, 112,500. Personal savings allowance is reduced. Dividend allowance is not reduced. And so we have 7,500 personal allowance tax-free, 47,500 is at basic rate, 35,000, which is the rest of the 90, is now at higher rate. Only 500 of the savings is at 0% personal savings allowance, which gives us 17,500 at higher rate, which is 7,000. 2,000 dividend is tax free, and 10,000 of dividend is at higher rate. If we add them all up, Doris's tax bill is, whoops, £33,750. Just a few final thoughts. If taxable income exceeds £150,000, tax is payable at additional rate. Personal savings allowance at that point is reduced to zero. The principle is the same. All you're doing is adding extra band or bands to the graph. It works exactly the same. And that hopefully for you and for me, is the easy way to do tax computations. And it does avoid the danger of not noticing when somebody creeps over that higher rate threshold, which is the bit most people get wrong. Thank you. And if there are any questions, then um, please um, fire away. Thank you very much, Jeff. Yeah, we haven't got any questions in at the moment. So I just like to invite everyone that's watching, if you do have any questions for Jeff, please do ask them now and we shall get them answered for you. Um, I guess whilst we wait, uh, one point I guess that I would consider is the, um, obviously the Financial Act, it changes every single year. So how do students know which um, kind of rates they should be looking at? And you know, when does AAT change that for the exams? Well, thankfully the rules there are, are quite straightforward in that from the 1st of January every year, the exams switch to the previous year's Finance Act. So for the whole of 2020, the exams will be based on the Finance Act 19 um, and from the 1st of January 2021 then it will be based on Finance Act 20. And the really good news and something that not everybody's aware of, in the exam there is a huge amount of tax data available via a pop-up. All of the key rates and allowances, some of the rules, uh, there are several pages that, that you can access by means of a pop-up. So if um, if you take a look at the practice exams that are on the AT website, the same pop-up is present and it is well worth investing some time looking at the data that's available on those practice exams and getting to know how it's structured, how to navigate it, because obviously when you're doing the real exam, 
the time available for navigation is limited and you don't really have a lot of time to go searching so it's worth familiarizing yourself with what is available in that in that collection of data thank you very much right so we've got lots of people saying thank you uh so i'm sure you're, you're very welcome uh samantha finneran asked if you could list the 12 steps so obviously we've gone through the 12 steps but are you able to just i guess label out one two three four to twelve um yeah i suppose um i can um what i can do if you like is i can uh, i could put that in an email if somebody would like leave us an email address um yeah, we can do that. So if um, we get uh, Samantha, if you want to send us a private message and we'll take your details that way, what I think we can also do is we'll, we'll what we'll do is we'll share these slides um, a little bit later on this afternoon and maybe we can add that to the slides as well for everybody else. If that sounds all right, Jeff. That sounds excellent. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Great. Yeah. I've got a question from uh, Nadine Pekova. She wants to know if the savings income causes the income to straddle the basic higher rate tax band, how much savings allowance do they get? You get the reduced £500. If the total income exceeds the threshold, then the personal savings allowance is reduced to £500. Fantastic. Thank you very much. I hope that answers your question. Um, Amy Bevans asked if an individual contributes to a personal pension and occupational pension, will the treatment of the basic rate band be different? The occupational pension is not taken into account in this computation. What does happen is that um, when, when you contribute to an occupational pension scheme, you are deemed not to have earned the money in the first place. So your salary is less because your salary is only counted after the deduction of the pension. Thank you for that. Right. Uh, yep. Everyone's saying thank you for those answers. It's really helping and adding, yes, adding the, the steps to the slides are going to be helpful. Um, so we don't have any more questions coming in. So Jeff, thank you very much for your time. Um, and now we'll be handing back over to Joe. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you again, Jeff, for joining us today. Another great session. So a big thank you to Premier Training. Uh, we hope everyone who is watching found this useful. If you'd like any more info about Premier Training and the offers they have on at the moment, uh, you can get in touch with them on the links that will pop into the comment box below. If you want to watch this video again or any of our other study support videos, head over to facebook.com forward slash your AAT forward slash videos. Uh, you may have seen the quiz question we popped into uh, the pre part of our video. Um, if you missed this, the question was which function in spreadsheets allows part of the worksheet to stay in view while the rest of the sheet moves? So you had two options to answer. Um, so we asked you to use the reactions for which you think was the correct answer. Those who used the wow emoji guessed the answer was lock cells. And those who used the heart emoji guessed the answer to this was freeze panels. So James, can you have a look to see what the majority guessed? Yeah, uh, pretty much everyone's gone for freeze panels. Perfect. How could we ever doubt you all? <laughs> Good work, guys. Um, I just really want to quickly um, mention about our Instagram page. Um, do you follow us? If not, get yourself over pronto. Our Instagram page is packed full of exclusive updates, competitions and motivational high fives to help you along your AAT journey. Interact with us, get study tips and hear other students tell their my AAT story and share their motivational tips. You can find us on Instagram at your AAT. That's at your AAT. Uh, we're working really hard to deliver you content that you need right now, but we really encourage you to get in touch with us to let us know what type of study content that you're after. So pop your thoughts in the comment box or you can get in touch with us on any of our social channels. So that's all from us today. Again, keep your eyes out for our next study session live on Facebook. Bye-bye.